So that's here. Okay, this is our orange now, and um, this is it with the blinds up, so hopefully it's not too bright for you, uh, but the lighting's better. And what I'm going to do with this is, uh, I'll just use the torch, there's two, uh, there's two windows here, there's one over there and there's one over there, so um, it's a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do when I paint this now, is I'm going to paint it as if it was about there. So the shadow, the shadow will be over here, and the highlight will be on the left hand side. So I'm just going to paint that now. So I'll just set this up and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Um, so here we have our blank piece of paper, and I wouldn't normally draw um, something as simple as an orange, because it's just a circle, but let's just say that that's our orange. I'll draw it a bit heavier than I normally would, just so you can see it clearly on the video. So now we've got the basic shape of our orange. I've mixed some paint prior to turning the camera on it, it's just some red and some some gamboge which gives us uh, that kind of colour which is <laughs> about the orange, the colour of an orange. And all you do to start with is fill your disc and try and get this as flat as you can. I've actually got the the, the drawing board on an angle here so uh, just so you can see it clearer on the video but you if you did this flat uh, you wouldn't get those these dark bits here but we can use that to our advantage. Just going to take some of that moisture out of there. Okay so what we want is a fairly even uh, an even coverage of paint and then if you remember the highlights are up here and the darks are down here so what we're going to do is we're going to lift the highlights out and this is just a moist brush just uh, dried out on a little bit of just taking some of that out before it runs and then all you do is just lift out the paint from where the highlight is and then you, again you're just using clear water just um, not too much, you don't want to be too wet otherwise you'll end up with a cauliflower and just mop out the paint there. So we've got light coming from this direction now and it's denoted by this here. Oops, I said that denote word again. And then just for the purposes of this exercise I'm just going to put a little bit of dark in the bottom here. So again while well, the paint's still wet <laughs> struggling to control this because it's on an angle. That's better. You've got to make sure that your paint you put on is, th is thicker in consistency than the moisture that the paper's already on. Right, it just bleeds up into it. So we're now getting some kind of shadow on that darker side and it'll bleed up into the into the other damp paint and then finally and this this is shadow but it's, there's also something called grounding which I like to use and it just makes things sit so I'm just taking it past there and it just makes things sit in their in their landscape so just a dark line along the bottom of anything that you draw will give you um, will give you that effect and it'll just make it more realistic. So there we have our orange sat nicely on some kind of table and we'll just put a little pip. <laughs> you can see how that just spreads, which is quite nice. And the drier the the drier the paper is the less it spreads. And that paper's just starting to dry there. And if you wanted to, so, so that demonstrates how you can get a three-dimensional quality from, from something that's on a flat piece of paper. So we've got highlights here, we've got darks here, we've got shadows here, and a little bit of grounding here, which will make it sit, sit down. If you had that against something else, like a, let's say the orange was close to a wall, 
then when this is all dry, and I'll just do it now and try and miss it just to demonstrate it, you would just do something like that. And then it gives the illusion that it's against the wall. So, but you would normally do uh, this edge touching the, the edge of the orange. But because it's damp, I don't want it to bleed into it. Um, otherwise, it'll just spread like wildfire. So that's basically how to make something three-dimensional out of, um, by using highlights, darks, uh, shadows and, uh, and grounding. Um, if you want to see more of this, there's, uh, this, this is part of uh, an e-book that's coming out in the spring. Um, and this is, these are examples of it. I'll just uh, move the zoom out of the way. And this shows, so we do, you do the direction of your arrow, you do, you draw the shape, you fill the shape in, you lift the highlights out, add the darks here and here, and then add the shadows and the grounding. And it works with chickens, trees, um, <laughs> somebody said that looked like a lemon, I'm sure it's a chicken. Um, and also it works with clouds. Um, so it's, it's exactly the same process and it's lifting highlights and adding darks it works with three dimensional things like houses and with things like uh, still life like this jug here um, so if you want to pre-register for that ebook it will be available in spring um, and if you just go to www.artstevo.com uh, full details are on there if you just click on the on the links on the ebook page on my site um, there'll be more on, on YouTube and if you want to leave comments um, <laughs> keep them clean please but if you want to leave comments um, and register anything that I put on YouTube you'll be advised of um, so if you can just subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel which is Bedlam1954 hope to see you soon there'll be another one shortly bye bye now